Almost normal translocations involve pairing two things with one another that don't belong paired with one another, like this guy in his shadow. While we're on the topic of something wrong, let's take a little bit closer look at how translocations might occur. So here we've got two copies of chromosome 8 and two copies of chromosome 14. Uh, one in each inherited from mom and one inher inherited from dad. And we set this up so that we've got some PCR primers over here, the oligonucleotides uh, that will align with chromosome 8 and that will align with chromosome 14. Obviously, we're not going to get any PCR product with these oligonucleotides because they aren't on the same DNA molecule. So let's see how we can get a translocation uh, between these chromosomes. When we're talking about DNA molecules, we often take shortcuts and we use one line to represent double-stranded DNA and sometimes it represents single-stranded DNA. So let's try to be a little bit more careful about it this time. In this case, uh, the big green line over here is a double-stranded linear DNA molecule. So if we zoom in on a little tiny fragment of it, this will look like this here. We've got anti-parallel complementary single strands, and they are our double-stranded DNA molecule. So the place where we put the little oligonucleotide is here, aligning anti-parallel and complementary. The light green uh, oligonucleotide will align with, will hybridize to the dark green box there. Uh, it will, of course, have the same sequence as uh, the anti-parallel complement on the top strand, but the oligonucleotide is sitting here hybridized to the bottom molecule on the on the green chromosome. Same thing over here with the uh, blue chromosome. We're going to zoom in on a tiny little region of it, uh, and that's going to be represented down here in our double-stranded DNA molecule. Anti-parallel complementary, the blue primer again, the dark blue primer will align with this dark blue box uh, and it will have the same sequence as the light blue box. So the initiating event for our translocation is two double strand breaks. Uh, one that affects the uh, the green chromosome and one that affects the blue chromosome. So some event has happened, we don't know what, but it's caused a double strand break. Now what we would hope to have happen with a double strand break uh, is that we would resect the ends, figure out what's going on, find a homolog, do some repair, do something to put these two ends back together. So what we would hope to have happen is that we would just fill in the blanks over here and get back to where we were. But what happens instead uh, is these guys get confused somehow. And instead of pairing green to green and blue to blue, uh, we somehow get this five prime end joined over here to this uh, five prime end, that three prime end. Uh, so that we're still moving five prime to three prime along the DNA. So we haven't done anything unnatural. We're still making a, an intact DNA molecule that's five prime to three prime, but now it is joining one of the blue chromosomes to one of the green chromosomes. Same thing's gonna happen. This molecule over here that's going five prime to three prime this way is going to come down and join that guy. So again, we haven't made any uh, anything anomalous. We've just joined up the wrong chromosome to the wrong uh, other chromosome. But we're, we're still going 5' prime to 3' prime in a continuous fashion along each of the DNA strands. Same thing is going to happen up here. We're going to join that guy to that guy and this one to this one. And what that looks like when it's all cleaned up is this. So we've now crossed over and joined uh, this end of that chromosome to that end of the other chromosome and the reciprocal translocation this end to this end. So if we go back now to our, our blob linear diagrams, what that looks like is we've got this joint uh, between the green and the blue chromosomes and that's represented here. So these two things are equivalent and the joint between the blue and the green is represented here, so these two things are equivalent. So when we show something like this, what we mean is this up here. 
Now if we go back and look at where those PCR primers were, uh, we can see that the blue primer that was on the blue chromosome over here and the green primer that was on the green chromosome that were facing each other before from different chromosomes and therefore wouldn't give a PCR product, now they are on the same chromosome, so they're on the same DNA molecule. And when we start doing PCR, when we extend this guy, we're going to make a copy of the primer site for the blue guy. And when we extend the blue one, we're going to make another copy of the primer for the green one. And that's how we're going to get the amplification. Because now we'll get a polymerase chain reaction because each time a primer is extended, it makes the binding site uh, for the other primer. And that's why we double in each cycle. So we're going to get nothing off of uh, this guy down here. Uh, and if we look at the blob diagrams, we'll see once again that now we've got the PCR primers facing each other, but only on this molecule. So we can use PCR primers to detect and characterize uh, the presence of this translocated chromosome.